In this video, I'm going to compare Windows Movie Maker to Windows 10 Video Editor, which is the video editor that replaced Movie Maker in Windows 10. Windows Movie Maker is a discontinued video editing software program by Microsoft. Movie Maker was officially discontinued on January 10th, 2017, and it is replaced by Video Editor. I know some people still find this video editor very useful in editing their videos, and for this reason, I have made it available for download on my website for free. So if you still want to use this software to edit your videos, then go to naturalvita.net, I will link that down below, and click on free downloads to download Windows Movie Maker. So I'm going to open both video editors on my computer to compare one to the other. All right, so when you want to access video editor in Windows 10, type here in your search area, video editor, or alternatively, you can also access video editor in the photos app. You can see that it comes up fairly quickly. This opens the video editor that comes with Windows 10. And the benefit of typing video editor and launching that way is that it opens the Photos app, but drops us directly into the Video Projects view. Alright, so this is the main video editor screen. When you land on this page, you will have all your projects displayed from newest to oldest. This means that when you have started a project in Video Editor and you want to continue the project at a later time, you can reopen Video Editor and you will find your started project here. Like for example, this wedding video that I have already started working on. So this is a really nice feature in Windows 10 Video Editor that we didn't have in Windows Movie Maker. So if you want to create a new video project in Video Editor, select New Video Project and name your video project. This brings us into the Windows 10 Video Editing interface. Now on the left hand side is the Project Library. And this is where we can add all of our videos and photos that we want to edit. On the right hand side is the preview window where we can preview our edited video as it comes together. Just underneath the preview window are the typical video controls like play, fast forward and rewind. And down at the bottom is the storyboard. This is very similar to the timeline area in Movie Maker where we can organize and lay out our clips and photos to make a movie. Of course, the order in which we organize our clips and photos down here will determine the order in which the video plays. And next to the word storyboard, on the right hand side, we have the menu area. So here is where we can find all the tools we need to edit our clips and photos. For example, we have the cutting tool, text, filters, and so much more. In Movie Maker, we have these tools right at the top. Let me now import a few clips and photos to the project library. When comparing Video Editor's user interface with Movie Maker, I believe Video Editor is more user-friendly and easy to navigate. You can see the layout is very clear and simple compared to Movie Maker. In Movie Maker, for example, when you have imported your clips and photos, they are all placed on the timeline automatically. Then you have to rearrange them if they're not in the order that you want them to be. And if you have a longer video, it will take up a lot more space on your timeline. So keeping track of all of your clips and photos on the timeline in Movie Maker is more challenging compared to in Video Editor, where all your clips and photos are housed in the project library. And when you place them on the storyboard, they take up one block at a time, as you can see here. So it's a lot easier to keep track of your project as it comes together. So for example, this is my first clip in Video Editor. 
This is my second clip. So I can edit each clip in the block without having these elongated clips and photos on my timeline. Now both Video Editor and Windows Movie Maker don't support PIP, also known as Picture in Picture. So this is an effect where you have two clips playing simultaneously one over the other. So you can only play one clip at a time in both Video Editor and Movie Maker. When it comes to editing your clips and photos, I find Movie Maker still has the upper hand compared to Video Editor because there are more editing tools and customizations available in Movie Maker compared to Video Editor. Now in both Video Editor and Movie Maker, you can cut your clips by using the Split tool. And you can trim your clips as well. And you can do that fairly effortlessly in both editors. Also, you can add text or caption in both Movie Maker and Video Editor. However, in Movie Maker, you can customize your text to a greater extent. So for example, you can move text around in your clip or photo. You can add a variety of text effects. And you have a lot more textile options compared to Video Editor. As you can see here in Video Editor, we only have 17 text styles to choose from. Whereas in Movie Maker, all the text styles that are available in Microsoft Word is what you will have in Movie Maker. Plus, you can download text styles from websites like dafont.com to your computer, which can then be accessible in Movie Maker. Also, in Movie Maker, you have the option to add transitions in between clips and photos, which you don't have in Video Editor. However, the upside in this is that if you use motion effect on a photo in Video Editor, it kind of looks like a transitional effect because the photo is in motion. But it is still a feature that is very useful in Windows Movie Maker, which you don't get in Video Editor. Now in both video editors, you can add music to your project. The advantage in video editor is that you're given free background music to use in your video project. And the music is actually quite good. Also, you can add your own custom music to your project by clicking here. In Windows Movie Maker, on the other hand, there's no inbuilt free background music. However, you also have the option to add custom music to your clips and photos. And you can edit your music tracks. For example, you can customize the start point of your music track and the end point, and much more. Another feature that you have in Windows Movie Maker, which is not available in Video Editor, is the option to take a snapshot of a clip or photo. So this is where a particular part of your clip can become a photo, a really handy feature for creating thumbnails for your YouTube channel, if you have one. In Video Editor, there is no option to record a narration, so you have to use an external software to record your voice and then import it to Video Editor afterwards. However, this is not such a big disadvantage as you can use the inbuilt voice recorder app in Windows 10 to make a recording and then import it into Video Editor with the custom audio feature. In Movie Maker, on the other hand, this feature is available. So that's another great feature missing in the new Video Editor by Microsoft. Finally, in Movie Maker, you can edit your title card with much more detail. You can add effects, change the background color, customize your text to a greater degree up here, and even move the text around as you see fit. In Video Editor, you also have some customization options, but they are not as diverse as in Movie Maker. However, in Video Editor, some of the text and layout options that you do have 
look very professional and modern compared to Movie Maker, so that's a plus. So just to sum up, if you want something more straightforward and easy to use, then Windows 10 Video Editor is a great starting point, especially with some of the extra features that you get, like free music and cool title effects. However, if you want greater editing flexibility and editing tools, then I think Movie Maker still wins the day. This is just my own personal opinion. Comment down below what you think about both editors and which one you prefer. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.